everyone, it's Angie. Welcome to Yarn Yak Tuesday. Woohoo! Almost my new favorite thing to do is sit down and talk yarn. Yeah. So thanks for joining me. Um, I'm glad you're here. And I've got uh, so many things to show you this week. I mean, I usually do, but I've got a lot of things to show you this week. I'm really glad I started doing this on Tuesday instead of as a part of my regular diamond painting whip and chat on Thursdays because it would have started taking up way, way, way too much time. So let's get right into it. We're going to start with new acquisitions, which I have a few, a few um, non-diamond or, or non-yarn acquisitions. I went ahead and bought two more furls hooks. The one that I had purchased originally was a five millimeter. I was enjoying it. I'm enjoying it greatly. It really helps to keep my hand from cramping. Um, I don't like that it doesn't have a thumb grip because I, I like to have my thumb naturally go to the right position you know, in relation to the hook. I really like that assistance, especially when I'm watching TV while I'm crocheting. Um, but it, I'm getting used to it. It's a, it's a learning curve. It is a little bit of a learning curve. If you're used to an aluminum hook or an ergonomic hook that does have a thumb rest, these furls hooks that are completely round are a little bit tricky to get used to using. But still, it's saving me some cramping in my hand because I do tend to grasp my hooks a little bit tightly um, just everybody's different and and that's my tendency I have to constantly remind myself uh, to not to do that oh so my hat yes I did crochet this hat and it's like a bun beanie um, having a bad hair day today and I didn't feel like doing my hair so threw the bun beanie on and no makeup today's a casual day guys sorry I just wasn't feeling it didn't sleep last night crocheted all night on a special project that I'm super excited to show you guys. I swear we never get traffic on my road and then immediately when I start filming this, traffic. Anywho, let's look at these new hooks. So I had a five millimeter. I wanted to get a six and a six and a half millimeter. So I wanted to try the wood version of the Furls Streamline hook because I was wondering if it might be a little bit lighter than the resin version. So it, in the box anyway, it doesn't feel any lighter. But let's take a look at it. I got the ebony and this is the six millimeter J hook. And that's what that looks like. And it has it engraved on here. It's difficult to see in the camera, but if you were here in person, you would definitely be able to see that. Um, it says J six millimeter. Um, nice, 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 nice. I really like the pokiness on the ends of these also. It helps to get into the stitches. So, but it doesn't feel any lighter. Um, in fact, let's compare it. This one is the six and a half millimeter. Oops, and it just rolled off the table. Six and a half millimeter streamline and the color Virgo. Ooh, that is pretty. Check that baby out. It's got green and teal and blue and yellow. Very, very, very pretty hook. And that, I'm sorry, no, this isn't a six and a half millimeter, it's a five and a half millimeter. That makes more sense. I was thinking, I don't really use six and a half millimeter that often. Why would I buy that? Um, but I do use, excuse me while I pick that up, I do use five and a half millimeter a lot. So I got those two, one's wood, one's resin. And I like them. I do, I do, I do. They're nice. Somebody out walking their dog back there looking at me probably thinking, what the heck is that lady doing? Uh, we have across the street from my house, we have, it's called a rail to trail. They took an old railroad, set of railroad tracks and converted it to a walking um, path. And it crosses the street kind of kitty corner from my driveway. Hate it. When we moved out here, that wasn't there. Um, I got Bo Duke next to me right here, sticking his head out the window, looking at the dogs. What do you think, Dukes? What's that dog doing? Is he going for a walk? Yeah, that dog was walking. <laughs> yeah, that's how Bo Duke feels about that. He says, I want to go for a walk, Mom. 
it's a pretty decent day out today in Michigan, so it's okay for walks. So anyways, I got those two new furls hooks. Set those over there on the windowsill. Seems like a perfect spot to rest them. That's enough. Yeah, enough. Really, you're pathetic. The other thing that I got was this book. It is called Modern Crochet Sweaters by Janine Miska. And it has 20 crochet sweater designs in it. And I just love that one on the cover that has those nice bell sleeves. I think that that's really, really cute. I'm probably going to make that. I, In fact, I can tell you I'm definitely going to make that. What I like about this book, now I won't use all of the patterns that are in here. Some of them are just a little too weird because it does say modern. Um, you know, some of them are off the shoulder or one sleeved or whatnot. They've got a dress in there. There's one that has a open, like a cut out back with a bow at the bottom. Maddie loves that one. She wants me to make her that one, which I, I will. Um, but I love that it gives all of the, the sizing charts are very, enough, I'm sorry, very elaborate. Um, they give all of the measurements for, you know, the bust line, top of length from tops, total length from tops of shoulders, v-neck depth, sleeve length, upper arm circumference, with wrist circumference. So it lists all of the measurements for those according to each size. Um, it also tells you a recommended yarn, but then it also gives you a, um, it gives you recommended substitutions. And it does include both some higher end yarns and some budget friendly yarns. So that's really nice that they give you, you know, they give you a lot of options when it comes to that. So there's definitely some sweaters in here that I'll be making. And I wish I could show them to you, but it's a pattern book and I don't want to get in trouble for showing somebody's pattern book. Um, but really nice book and it's very well, I mean, it's very well constructed, heavy duty book. I saw on, I think I mentioned this before um, with my stitch dictionary, what I'm going to do is take it to Staples and have them turn it into a, uh, a coiled, uh, like a ringed kind of bind rather than a regular, you know, bound book so that I can easily flip through the pages and I won't crack my spine and it'll set open nicely. So I plan to do that with this book because I have a feeling that this one is going to be a handy reference guide for me in the future. So I picked that up at Amazon. That was on Amazon. It's called Modern Crochet Sweaters. 20 patterns. And it was like 20 bucks, so a dollar a pattern. Not bad. Granted, I can't use them all, but still, not a bad price. Okay, that's it for my non-yarn acquisitions. Now let's get to my yarn acquisitions. Yay, so excited. I'm going to start with something that I just picked this stuff up last night. Um, I was, my friend texted me yesterday and was at Ollie's, which if you don't know what an Ollie's is, it's like a warehouse outlet store, similar to like a Big Lots where they get, you know, just like factory overstocks and stuff like that. And you never know what's going to be there. I mean, they've got from groceries to toiletries to household items to furniture to artwork to yard equipment, you know, lawn and yard equipment. Um, just about virtually anything, but I've never, ever, ever seen them have yarn. They had yarn. So she texted me yesterday and she asked, is $4.99 a good price for this? And I was like, um, yes, um, I will be there immediately. So I took myself over to my local Ollie's and I got these one pound Burnett Cozy style yarns, which are a four worsted weight yarn. That's, I got a terrible light in here, don't I? Let me try turning this off and see what happens, if that makes it any better. We still getting quite that, we really are still getting a horrible background. Let me see if, let me see if closing that might make it a little bit better. I'm gonna close a curtain here. Close a curtain or two and see if that makes a difference. I reclined my chair. 
Let's see. Yeah, that's a, oh, I'm still getting quite a bit. I need to do the other one too, don't I? Well, this is going to be quite the maneuver. I've got a table in front of me and the chair behind me. Bo Duke, grab that curtain, would you? See if I can do this. Now we got that. I think that's gonna be better for us. Yeah, I think that lighting is gonna be a lot better. So I apologize for the lighting at the beginning of the video. Yeah, this is gonna this is gonna show it a lot better. Anywho, thank you for your patience. Really sorry about that. Um, this is Bernat Cozy Style Yarn. And it's a four medium worsted weight yarn. 100% acrylic, um, 1,015 yards. And it is, it is softer than Red Heart Super Saver, definitely. I would say it's comparable to, it's even a little bit softer than Joanne's Big Twist yarn. Um, but it's just a regular acrylic. You know, there's nothing really special about it. But $4.99 for 1,000 yards, Yes, please. So I got, I think I got three blacks because it's always great to have, especially when you make granny square blankets and stuff like that. It's great to have, you know, basic colors. So I got three blacks and I was surprised that they had like neutral colors like that too. I got a white, which this is like a white, white. Yeah, just blank white. And I got a cream, which what color are they calling this? They're calling it Aaron, the color Aaron. It's like a cream, and it's a buttery cream too. Buttery cream. And then I got three of this gorgeous gray. Now I actually might make something out of this gray. Let me get some, let me change this. Let me change this. There, that. That's probably the best light that shows the real color. There we go. But isn't that a gorgeous heather gray? And this is called soft gray. So beautiful. I'm gonna make something with this one. Like I won't use this just for, you know, borders and joining squares and, you know, base stuff like that. I'll, I'm gonna make, I might make a sweater with this. This is really pretty stuff. It's almost like a heather gray. Then they also had for $1.99. Oh, they had more than that too. For $1.99, I also picked up these um, Modern Baby, Lion Brand Modern Baby. And they are 50% acrylic, 50% nylon baby yarn. And they're three weight yarn. And I thought just for, you know, just to have $1.99 for 173 yards, can't beat that. Just to have, picked up I think three of those. And then they also for $4.99, and I love this. They had this, and I hope that I'm gonna pronounce this correctly. I might not pronounce it correctly. It's called Red Heart Higgy Charm, H-Y-G-G-E, Hig, Higgy, Higgy. I'm not sure, 432 yards of a medium four worsted weight yarn. And it has these like sparkles in it. These, not really sparkles because they're all, they're black also, but they're, you see what I'm talking about. They're like little, little sparkles. So Higgy Charm, hope I'm saying that right, uh, 432 yards. I don't think it's probably going to be close to 100% acrylic, but it's probably got a different fiber content for the, yeah, for those little flecks. 97% acrylic, so basically 100% acrylic, but it has a nice little halo on it. It's actually very fuzzy, very, very soft. Um, ve this is super, super soft. This is even softer than that Bernat. This is definitely um, really nice yarn. 
So they're saying the regular price on it would have been $10.99. And I believe that. I, be I believe retail on it would have been $10.99. And I got those for $4.99 also. So if you're near an Ollie's, check out your local Ollie's. They might have yarn. They had some other yarns too. They had some fancy yarns. I didn't get everything that they had. Um, I was going to get one and make a blanket with it, but Jeff said it was ugly. So I don't know. I don't necessarily trust his opinion though. He's a guy. Okay, so that was my Ollie's little yarn haul. Now let's get to my haul from Michigan Fine Yarns. Uh, I told you guys last Thursday uh, I was going to meet Mindy down in Livonia, Michigan, and we were going to go to the store Michigan Fine Yarns and see what we could find. And we found lots. We f I found lots. I found tons and tons. They had the Noro of my dreams that I've been seeking after and just coveting um it's color number 12 of the noro bocce i want that yarn so bad i want it i want it want it i came this close to buying it 44 dollars a ball yeah i really wanted it i didn't do it and i'm glad i didn't because little knits on the internet the interweb um, is an online store. Um, they have it for, or it, it's more now, but when I looked, it was $74.35 for a bundle of five balls, same size ball. So that's quite a significant price difference. So um, yeah, I did go ahead and order that. So excited! Can't wait for it to get here. Uh, it hasn't even shipped yet, which I'm a little bummed about that, but it'll be here soon. It'll get here. So let's talk about what I did get from Michigan Fine Yarns, though, because I did find quite a bit of stuff that I um, I liked and that I got. Um, now, I told you guys last week that I was making a hat and scarf, hat and knit set for my friend Sue, but that I had had a mitten fail. Remember my mitten fail with the Lion brand? Here it is, it's still sitting here. I haven't done anything with it yet. My mitten fail with the Lion brand hometown yarn. Just too bulky and too dense of a yarn for this mitten. Um, but she wanted green and I made the hat in this yarn and it looks fabulous. I actually have one in this green also and it's, I love the feel of it. It's nice and warm. It's a very, thick yarn it's a I think it's a super bulky six let me see I got the tag right here yeah it's a super bulky six so um that didn't that didn't work so I wanted to try to find something to replace it with in actually ideally a five weight yarn I couldn't find anything in a five weight but I did come across this in a four weight and this is from Plymouth Yarn Company. It's called Coffee Beans. And it's a 75% acrylic, 25% wool. In the color 9002. <laughs> That's an original color name. Um, but it's a tweed. It's another, you know, it's a green tweed. And I think that putting the, I know that they're not identical. Obviously, they're different brands from, you know, different companies you know, all that, but they're both tweeds and they're both, you know, green tweeds. And I figure if you've got the hat up here and the mitts down here, it's going to be, it's going to be close enough. I mean, it's very, very close. They're very, very close to matching. So I, this is a partially unspooled because I did start making a mitten from a different pattern because this is four worsted weight yarn. Started making a different mitten from a different pattern and it didn't turn out. It was too small. So I need to do some, I think I'm gonna have to just come up with something on my own and make some adjustments. Um, and, cause I really like the idea of having the single crochet um, mittens. I'm just going to have to make some size adjustments for a four weight yarn versus a five weight yarn, which is what the other mitten pattern that I had been using was, and it was working well for me, but the multiples or your count only is working 
with a five weight yarn, uh, you know, obviously. You know, if you go to a smaller weight yarn, you need more stitches to cover the same area. So I need to, I think I just, I'm just gonna mess with it and, and do that. Poor Sue, by the time I get these damn mittens made, it, winter's gonna be over. I'm sorry, Sue. I'm really sorry, there'll always be next winter. So that I found that at Michigan Fine Yarn. So that was that was a good find. That was I was thrilled with that. I was thrilled with that find. Then um, I found Mindy and I both got this. Oh my gosh! And I love this stuff. I, I I just love it. And she has a pattern for it. And I've got to I've got to talk to her again. And um, it was a pattern that she downloaded from Etsy from an Etsy seller. And. I need to um, get with her and get that pattern because the pattern calls for three different colors of yarn. And these are the three that I chose. Aren't those gorgeous? Aren't those just beautiful? Totally not my colors, are they? No, they're not. I wanted to do something a little bit different, but mm, so pretty. And this yarn is called Ella Ray Cozy Soft Machine Washable Wool Blend. I love a wool blend. It is, it is so, so silky soft. It, it feels like, um, it feels to me like the soft secret from Yarn Bee from Hobby, Hobby Lobby. It's that soft. It really is that soft. And to be a wool blend, so see, it's 75% acrylic, 25% wool. Wow. 25 wool. That's crazy. So it is uh, machine wash cold, lie flat. And uh, what weight is this? It almost looks like a three weight. Let's see, it doesn't say on here. I hate it when they don't say, I really do. Drives me nuts. Cause then you gotta guess when you're looking for a pattern. So this um, is called this color number is called thirty five, which is weird because the other ones actually have a color name, but this one's just called thirty five. But Ella Ray, I really like this yarn. It's very very squishy. Um, like I said, this is probably the softest, the softest acrylic wool blend, especially for that amount of wool that I've ever felt. It's super super soft but I would definitely say it's a three weight yarn yeah it's I mean it's a good three weight but it's not a four this one is called persimmon I really like this one the best I think this one's my favorite let's see this one has a different tag maybe this one Oh, no, this one does have a gauge. Yep, it's a three. It does say it's a three weight on this one. And this one is called color number 19. Oh, I guess so only that persimmon had a name. But look at that. Isn't that pretty? I love those colors in there. So super pretty. And you know, I'm a big fan of orange. And, you know, these are orangish. So, so, so super pretty. So I can't wait to make a couple hats. I'll be able to get a couple hats out of this because I've got three colors. Um, and you know, I've got a, a ball of each color. How many yards are in here? I don't know why they can't make things easy for me. This is made in China. That's interesting. Um, you don't get that a lot. Most will, or most are made in Turkey. 100 grams, 213 yards. Probably this variegated one has less yardage. Usually they do. Still 100 grams. No, still 213 yards. Nice. So I got 645 yards. Yeah, I can do some damage with that. I can get a couple hats out of that. Maybe three. Out of a three weight yarn? I don't know. Maybe not. I'm not good at that yet. Um, I'm really not good at that yet, as I'm going to show you when we get into my whips. I'm really not good at that. Um, so that's, I got that. Then I got this stuff. And this was just a, 
on a whim I saw it there and I really liked the looks of it purchase it is also from Plymouth Yarn Company and it is called hot cakes and it's a big old cake of yarn hot cake 75% acrylic 25% wool 200 grams 404 yards of a medium for worsted weight yarn and that is what it looks like isn't that awesome? It reminds me of Superman ice cream. Doesn't it look like Superman ice cream? I I think it does. So I got three cakes of this because I thought that it would make a fantastic baby blanket. And it is going to make a fantastic baby blanket. So I started said baby blanket. And let me show you how it is turning out so far. I got two cakes in. So I'm, I'm, I'm cruising right along on this. And I chose to use, um, it's called the Sober Granny Stitch. And I think it looks fantastic with this self-striping yarn. Now I'm not color controlling this at all. So wherever the colors break, that's where they break on the blanket. But I think that adds to kind of the rustic charm of it because the colors on here are, I mean, they're very, um, they're primary type colors but they're kind of muted or dulled they're not bright bright if you know what i mean i don't know quite they're not bright yeah they're they're more muted they're more natural i guess is the word i'm looking for and even within the skin or within the ball or within the cake like this orange can be a little bit different than this orange, even within the same cake. So it's like as they were dyed, the the colors are dyed a little bit differently. And I think it adds to the charm of it. I think it makes it kind of look like a hand dyed. Um, it, it, I think it looks really pretty. I think it looks cool like that. It is machine washable, machine wash, gentle, tumble dry low. So that's always cool if you can machine, especially with a baby blanket. If you can machine wash and dry, that is a bonus. So yeah, um, now that I've showed you guys, I wanted to keep one of them in the cake to show you what it looked like caked up. And, um, and then I also wanted to be able to show you what it looked like worked up. So now that I've shown you that, I can go ahead and finish off my baby blanket. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a border row around this. Um, it's kind of a scalloped, like a shell border row around the entire thing. So all the sides will match. Just because I don't want to end with just one side being kind of scalloped like that. I want it to be uniform on all sides. So I'm going to do a border row of a, of a scalloped shell um, around the whole thing. And I'm trying to decide, and I would love you guys' input on this, trying to decide what color I should do that in. So, um... I was thinking like cream, beige. Maddie thinks I should choose a bold primary color that's not in the blanket. Jeff said black. What do you guys think? What color should I make my border? I don't think white would be appropriate just because of the way these colors, like I said, they're kind of dulled or muted. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what, I would appreciate any comments because you know that's one thing that I really really struggle with is colors. I, I desperately struggle with colors and putting colors together and trying to trying to make something complement each other. I really struggle with it. All right so the next to last kind of yarn that I got Mindy and I both got this yarn and I've seen it on a couple of channels and um, I really wanted to try it. I was uh, I was really interested in trying it for crochet. It's primarily marketed toward, for knitters. And it is self-patterning yarn. So this one is from the Hayfield, is, is a Hayfield brand, and it's called Baby Blossom Chunky. Okay, and do you see? It's just gray and then white and uh, green and pink. So the idea with this is that you're going along, and what's really nice about this is it's like an ombre gray. It's like a gradient dark to light gray. It's very, very pretty worked up. They had samples of it. They had a, a baby's dress made with this, 
And what it ends up looking like is you've got your gray stripes that are gradient ombre from you know light to dark gray. And then all of a sudden you have a white band and within that white band you have the green and then the pink so that it just by knitting not by putting the pad not by knitting the pattern in it looks like stems and flowers and it really does it really really looks like that um, but we wondered how it would work out for crochet so we thought what the hell let's give it a try so this is very, very soft. Um, it, obviously, it's a baby yarn. Um, it is a thicker four-weight uh, yard yarn, and it is um, washed up, machine washable, wool cycle, dry flat. So no uh, 100 grams, 155 meters, 170 yards. 70% acrylic, 30% nylon. Very squishy, very soft. We're gonna make scarves. So Mindy went ahead and found a scarf um, pattern that we looked at and we thought would probably might work for this yarn in a crochet. Cause you know, crochet just yields a different result than knitting. And um, so it'll be interesting to see how this works up or if it even works. I did cheat a little bit and I, I really wanted to try it. So I went so far, I just did single crochet and I'll show you what I ended up with. So this is what it looked like single crocheted. And this is just working right from the scheme and that's how it ended up. So yeah, I guess I can kind of see where it doesn't look quite as cool as it did on the knit version or the knit dress that we that we saw but I can kind of see where it gives the appearance of flowers a stripe of you know stems and flowers so it's I, I think it's gonna be cool I think I'm really excited about the project so we're gonna start on the project she picked out a pattern um, I think we're going to start any time now. I, I think we're good to go. I've got to text her and see if uh, she started already. And if not, if we can start today, because I'm ready. After I showed you guys the yarn, I'm ready to start. Okay, now getting to my last acquisition from Michigan Fine Yarns. Oh, let me put these back in here. And this was my big ticket item. I bought four hanks of... Malabrigo Rios in the color 877 QK, QG, QG. I'll let you guys see what it says. That's the color. I don't know what it says. But look at that. Look at those colors. It has, isn't that just gorgeous? So totally not usually my thing but I just fell in love with this color. And I bought, oh my gosh, so squishy. So squishy, so soft. It's 100% um, superwash, merino, wool. Um, it's very, very, very soft. 210 yards. And it's a worsted weight. They're saying it's a worsted weight, yeah, I'd call it a three. I really would. Um, I'm using a four millimeter hook with the project that I'm doing and it's working up beautifully. I'd call it a three. It's, it's, it's pretty small. A heavy three maybe, but a three. <clears throat> so let me show you what I'm making with it. So I left, I left two hanks unballed. I balled up the other two hanks and I used them already. I went through both of them already. And I, so now I can ball these other two up and continue on with my project. I am making, I finally found a pattern for a sleeved cardigan poncho. It's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. Um, I 
can't tell you the name of the YouTuber um, or the pattern because it's in a foreign language and I can't pronounce it, but it is in the playlist that I have that's set, titled Crochet, if you're interested. And this is where I have gotten to so far. I'm going to show you the back so you can see the stitch and how it's coming along. Isn't that working up beautifully? And I swear I am getting so spoiled, you guys. Oh my God, why didn't somebody tell me? This is the probably the most expensive yarn I've ever worked with. And maybe, maybe not. Maybe some of my Knit Crates yarns were more expensive. They probably were more expensive, but I don't know if they were as as high quality put it that way um but this is a joy to work with an absolute joy to work with this yarn but isn't it looking fabulous i am loving 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 working with this now this is going to be on the this is going to be a fitted this is a, a very fitted shawl and i did just try this on and it's going to be fitted I might have to drop a few pounds. Um, either that or it's going to become a gift for one of my daughters because I'm too far in at this point to start over. Probably should have gone with the extra large. I did not. Um, maybe after I'm finished, if I block it, I can <laughs> stretch it too. <laughs> stretch it a little bit bigger, but uh, that's what it looks like so far. Beautiful, beautiful yarn loving working on this. I'm having just a blast working on this. Super, super fun. And just, I love making garments. I found that garments are my niche. Oh, um, the other thing is it's a two, <clears throat> I only got four hanks, 210 yards of hanks. So I'm not going to have enough for the entire thing. What the creator of the pattern did is she had a solid color for the main part of her body and then a self-striping yarn for the bottom part of the body of the sweater and the bottom part portion of the sleeves. So I decided, I, at first I was going to order more of that um, Rios and I thought, Jesus, this thing is going to cost me a fortune by the time I'm done with it. I've already got, you know, four hanks in at $15 a hank, you know, uh, it's going to be an expensive little project. So I, and, and plus I didn't want to wait for something else to get delivered because I'm impatient that way. So I was looking at other yarns that I could put with it to use for the bottom portion. And this is what I came up with. I am going to use this Yarn Bee Soft Secret in this color, which is shale. I just had this here in my stash. So what do you guys think? So the bottom portion is going, just the bottom few inches is going to be in that. Do you think that's gonna look okay? Let me know in the comments. I couldn't think of another color. I tried black with it, it black didn't look great with it. Um, I tried lighter gray with it, it, that didn't look good. I really liked the look of this dark gray with it. I thought I thought it looked really nice. So let me know, let me know what you think. And you know, this is the thing too, this is 100% acrylic yarn. This is 100% wool yarn. Can you do that? I don't know, are there rules in crochet? I don't know, I'm gonna do it. I don't care, I don't care if there's a rule. I'm gonna do it anyway. This is like a super, super, if you've ever worked with this stuff, it's a super soft acrylic, um, probably the softest acrylic I've ever felt. Full acrylic. It's super, super soft. Okay, so um, that is the end of acquisitions. That is all I got for acquisitions. Yes. So now let's talk about some whips. I want to ask your opinion about one more thing. You know, I made that green um, little cardi for my granddaughter. Well, Mindy also got that green yarn in her mystery box and she wasn't going to use it. So we made a swap. We traded some things when we met up. We traded some yarn with one another. It was really fun because I ended up with yarn that 
I loved and she didn't wasn't going to use and vice versa. So it worked out really nicely. But let me show you the idea that I had. So anyway, she, this green yarn, she had enough of it that I'm going to have enough to make another cardigan for my other granddaughter. So they'll each have one and it'll be so super cute, a nice cute spring cardigan. So as a reminder, this was the yarn. This was from the Knit Crates Mystery Box. And this is a very interesting blend of yarn. I don't want to take the, I've got my tag tucked in the center here. I don't want to take it out because my ball will collapse on it. Um, I've already got it balled up. Um, but it's like silk and alpaca. No, maybe not alpaca. Silk and superwash and um, I don't remember what else is in it. But it's like a very nice, very, very nice um, combination of fibers in this yarn. It feels great. So Maddie made me these little flowers. And I was thinking about putting these flowers on the sweater right here and make them. Do you think that those two colors look good together for a little girl's cardigan? I think they look cute together. I think they're very cute together. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put these little flowers on the cardigan. So I just wanted to show you that. Um, dun, dun, dun whips okay let me move this out of the way don't touch that he's still over in the window even though he can't see out the window because i closed the curtains i worked up my well let's do finished objects first then we'll do whips last so this could technically be considered a finished object because i finished it to the furthest uh that i could this was my blocks one through three of my metal lane sampler afghan from annie's kits club so it was the cream ones and i made four or three blocks so i made this block it's a little cockeyed and i have to block that block yeah. it's a little crookedy that block which was the only interesting block in that whole pack because the other block was just a single crochet block and the other block was just a, you guessed it, a double crochet block. So you did a single crochet block, a double crochet block, and then that one kind of interesting shell block. And that was, that was it for one through three. It's still gonna, the end result's gonna be really cool, even though, even if it was a little bit boring. Um, the end result blanket is gonna be just the coolest. So I can't wait till I get my next month's kit. See what happens next month. All right, uh, not more finished objects. I found a use, another use for my Karen Crystal Cakes. I had purchased some Karen Crystal Cakes on clearance at Michael's, say that five times fast. Um, and for five dollars and these cakes are I, I love them i absolutely love them um they're 8.5 ounce 634 yard cakes of a size four worsted weight yarn um and that's what they're called karen crystal cakes and this color is i don't know if they have they had them on clearance i don't know if they have them anymore this color is rattan, the color rattan. I made two hats. They're identical hats. One is a bit smaller than the other. Um, one's for a big head and one's for a little head. No, Maddie has a bigger head than me and she wanted one. So one's for me, one's for Maddie. This is a stitch pattern from Bag o Day Crochet. Um, but I love the gradient, um, color way of this yarn looks super, super cool in this hat design and it's a very comfortable hat. So I am going to, and look at how much I made two hats and look at how much I have left. I have tons left. I could probably make two more hats and I probably will, um, just give them away. 
So I did that. I made another purse out of that same ice yarn. So you guys saw this purse last week. Well, you didn't see this purse, but you saw another one like this. I made another one. Maddie wanted one. So another purse. So that was another finished object this week. That was all my finished objects. I mean, I did a, I've done a ton of crocheting, but that's all I finished. So uh, my other, my work's in progress, other than my cardigan shawl or my cardigan poncho, I started another poncho. Actually, I've got two more ponchos going. I'm using another one of my crystal cakes. And this is a, the Karen crystal cake, same yardage, 634 yards. Um, this is, I didn't tell you the fiber content, 64% acrylic, 24% polyester, 7% nylon, 5% metallic. And this color is shea butter. And I love this color. This color is just phenomenal. Just super nice, super nice color. And this is a four point poncho. So it has a deeper V in the front and in the back than it does um, over the arms. But that's how that's working up. Isn't that just gorgeous? Gorgeous, gorgeous. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. Yes, I'm loving it. Love, love, loving it. This is going to be a nice bright or a nice light airy poncho for spring or fall. And I think the color with the sparkle is going to be just great for spring. Super nice. Super nice and lightweight. Very pretty. It's going to be, yeah, that's going to be amazing. So I love that, loving that. And then my other poncho, I don't know if I showed this one to you guys last week or not. Um, I know that I showed you the scarf that I made with this yarn, but I don't know if I had started on the poncho yet. This one I'm using Ice Yarns Vivid Wool. And it's just a very, very, very multicolored wool. 50-50 wool acrylic blend. And this is how that one's coming out. Now this is going to be a heavyweight winter poncho. It is already heavy. Um, just, and it's not, it's not complete yet. But I underestimated how much yarn I was going to need. And I don't think I'm going to have enough yarn to finish it. So I think what I'm going to have to do, unfortunately, is maybe take apart that scarf. I might have to frog sacrifice that scarf to get enough yarn to finish the poncho, which I hate to do because I absolutely loved the way the scarf turned out. I know I could just order more, but my yarn budget's kind of shot right now. Um, and I guess I could just wait until I can afford to order more. That's probably what I should do. Um, but yeah, isn't that great? Loving it, loving it, loving it, loving it. This is going to be just such a warm thing. Kind of wish this one had been a four-point poncho as well. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Not taking it apart now. I'm not going to redo it now. And those are my whips. Oh, I got one last whip over there. Well, and my granny square blanket. I'm still, I, I worked on it a little bit this week. Not as much as I did last week. And I am still working on my baby blanket for my niece's new baby who was born uh, a little over a week ago. I need to get that finished. It's close. It's just going to be a car seat blanket, you know, a small one. So it's, I don't have too much left to go on it. I should just power through and get it done. It's a tough stitch pattern though. It's called a boxed shell, box shell, I think, stitch. It's a tough stitch pattern. It's like an eight row repeat, a seven row repeat. And um, there's like two foundation rows and then you build the shell rows on top of that. It's a tough repeat. It's, it's, a, it's an advanced pattern for me anyway. I feel like it's, adva it's an advanced pattern. But that's what I've had going on this week. I got a lot done this week. I really, really did. Uh, so thank you for tuning in and hanging out with me while I talked about my yarny stuff. I hope that you enjoyed everything. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, if you have any recommendations, also let me know. I love, I mean, I'm still um, learning, so I love to get any kind of recommendations or suggestions. Love to hear them. 
So thanks a lot and I will see you guys in my next video, which if you're only here for yarn will be next Tuesday, but if you're here for all of my greatness, will be later on today. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye.